I am all about what? Using the things I grow, but also having delicious comfort food. You know, it's that time of year. And I hate the word comfort food in the sense that all food should be comfort. You're nourishing your body, you're having something delicious, and you're enjoying it. So this is kind of a take on chicken pot pie. I'm not into the whole like crusting, double crusting. I like biscuits on top. So this is chicken pot pie with biscuits on top. It's honestly, it takes a few steps, but it's really not that hard. It could totally be a weeknight meal. It could be a weekend meal. It could be one of those meals if you're single that you make on a Sunday and eat for the rest of the week. It's just, it's a great meal. So to start, I wanna get some onion sauteing with my celery. So the one thing, I have a little bit of butter. Well, not a little bit. I have a good amount of butter that is melting on the stove here. And it's kind of just at that point where it's heated. So when I put in the onion, it's gonna sizzle just slightly. Then you know it has some good heat to it. So I'm gonna add the onion. I'm also gonna right away add my celery to that. I like my celery to definitely start sauteing down, get softened. I do not like crispy celery. So the big takeaway is always season as you go. So add some salt right to this. I always will do that with anything I'm making. I'll stir it in so that can start sauteing. So usually with a pot pie, you're gonna put all your vegetables right into there. I'm gonna do it slightly differently. I'm gonna let that saute, but then I'm also gonna get certain things ready to go into the oven to roast. So chicken is kind of a important part of chicken pot pie. So for that, I have my chicken breast here and they're gonna to need to roast in the oven. So I'm gonna also roast a couple of the vegetables with them. I like the consistency. I like the texture of roasted carrots, instead of just cooking them and sauteing them and letting them soft, I like them to maintain some texture and some of that good, delicious kind of roasted flavor. So I actually am going to put them in the oven with the chicken and some sweet potato. Sweet potato is not normal in a pot pie, but I like it. I like the sweetness and I also just kind of like that variant in texture. So I'm gonna roast it here with the carrots. I'm gonna finish chopping these up, put it all in the pan and we're gonna get going. So I have my chicken right on here. I have my carrots. I'm gonna add that sweet potato. You know, this is what's great is, you were gonna have to roast the chicken anyway, so you're not really dirty anymore. And it's just nice to have that flavor and texture of the roasted carrot and sweet potato with it. So it's chicken breast, pretty simple. So I'm gonna put some olive oil on it. I'm gonna put olive oil over all these vegetables. That is, okay, anytime you're roasting anything, any vegetable, any, Putting this fat on it, the olive oil, which is a healthy fat, is flavor. This is what really is gonna flavor what you're roasting and help it get that kind of crust on it, help it sear, and that's exactly what you want. So on top, the next thing that's gonna flavor it, salt. Salt is super important, especially things like meat, chicken, you know, it doesn't have a lot of flavor on its own and salt really brings out that flavor. I'm gonna add that wonderful salt to all this. I say this almost probably every video, broken record here, I don't mind. Um, we get 70% of our salt from eating out fast food, processed foods. So if you were cooking at home, eating at home, you don't have to be as scared about salt. Obviously for health conditions, yes, but if you're cooking at home, you eat a lot less salt. So I'm gonna put this right into the oven. Simple, ready to go. We're gonna let it roast. We're gonna let the onion and celery continue to saute, just get softened, not get color to it and then we're gonna be on our way. So while the vegetables are roasting with the chicken, the onion is sauteing very slowly, I'm gonna quick put together some biscuits for on top. And these are gonna be a drop biscuit. We're not gonna roll them out, we're not gonna cut them. We are just going to make them, scoop them, and drop them on top. That makes it easier, and this is my grandma's recipe. So we're gonna do some flour. You know, biscuits, there's all different types. You can laminate them even and make them have layers, but these are just kind of like that simple, I'm again, I use this word a lot, I'm gonna call them a weeknight biscuit because guess what? That's what they could be. So some flour, easy. We're gonna put in some baking soda. You of course wanna have the baking soda. And then we're gonna put in some baking powder. And you know, there are sometimes just all baking powder biscuits, but these also will have the buttermilk. So it kind of has like that whole double action in it. And then to that, I need some salt. You definitely need salt, that's gonna season them. And I'm gonna add some sugar, a little bit of sugar, but sugar, it seasons them really well. It doesn't make them sweet, but it also just helps them brown and get nice color. And to me, that's important. So that's all my dry ingredients. And 
Now I have my butter. I cut it up in small pieces, and I'm gonna be honest. This to me, you could use a pastry cutter. You could even get out a food processor and do it, but you know what? I like doing it with my hands because it's super simple. I just coat all those pieces of butter and flour, and then I'm just gonna pick up each one and just start pushing it between my thumb and forefinger. And that is just kind of, it's creating these little layers that sometimes I think this can be better than like a food processor because you have kind of bigger pieces and that's what you want. That's gonna give you that really delicious texture in a biscuit. So I'm gonna sit here and just do this a little bit till they get to kind of a coarse crumb, kind of the size of a pea or smaller, and then we'll keep going. I have all that butter worked in, and how you know, you kind of, it's not, there's no science to this, so even if it's not perfect, don't worry. But once I have it all worked in, and you kind of see it looks kind of a coarse, crumbly mixture, I like to take some, and if it can hold together just slightly, but then break apart easily, to me that's kind of the perfect way to get it there. So now I'm gonna add in some buttermilk. Super simple. Now, I've always said, if you don't have buttermilk, you can totally do like a tablespoon of vinegar with the amount of milk needed that curdles it slightly and kind of creates the same effect in a pinch. It doesn't have the same flavor. So if you have better milk or can get it, it has a better flavor and it will make a better biscuit. So just with a fork, I'm quickly putting these together. Look at that. Simple. Look how simple that is. And what's even better, I'm not gonna roll them out. So there they are. We're gonna let them sit here for just a minute while everything else is getting ready. When the roasted vegetables and chicken are done, we're gonna pull them out. We can make the white sauce, we can move on. It's gonna be great. I pulled out the potato, carrot, chicken. It's all done, I'm just gonna let it sit, cool off slightly, cause I can't, can't touch the chicken yet. Cause it's, it's too hot. So in here, I have this sauteing. The butter is, you can see it's just kind of boiling just slightly, which is what you want. So I'm gonna do a couple things here. I'm gonna add in just a little bit of mustard. So a good kind of brown or Dijon mustard just adds that little bit of flavor that, again, it's an undertone. It is like, if you're gonna say, I don't like mustard, don't, don't worry. You're not gonna taste it. It just adds that little bit of something underneath that you kind of just to me need. And it really wakes everything up. I'm gonna add a little bit of dried thyme. You could use fresh, but guess what? It's the winter here in Iowa. I dried my own herbs last fall from the garden. Dried herbs have tons of flavor. They're picked at peak freshness. They have all those essential oils in them and they just are good. So if you have them, use them. There is nothing wrong with that. So while that's bubbling, I'm gonna take my flour. This is what's gonna thicken it and create really the base of our kind of sauce that you need. I'm gonna start stirring that flour right in to the butter, to that mustard and that onion and celery. And we're gonna let it just stir around. So this is kind of how you would make the base to a lot of things, right? This kind of gives you the base to like a white sauce. And this, the amount of flour in here is strong enough to really create a good kind of thick texture, which you need with a pot pie. So I'm stirring it around just because I want to stir it for a little bit to get that flour kind of rawness off of it. Flour on its own kind of has a raw taste, obviously. So if you cook it for a little bit here, it's almost like it toasts it. it creates kind of like a toasty, nutty flavor. So I'm gonna stir it here for just like a minute or two, let it get kind of toasty, and then we'll slowly start adding in our liquid. So I've been stirring this. It's kind of clumpy, as you can see, and it's just wanting to like coat and stick to the bottom of the pan, which lets you know that it's been cooking long enough. I'm gonna start by adding in just a little bit of white wine. I know, this seems just a little bit elevated for a pot pie. It is. But I do, again, I like that little bit of acidity it has in it. It has just a little bit of flavor. It starts breaking down that flour a little bit. Then we're just gonna slowly add in our chicken stock. And you can do this kind of, I like to do a little bit slowly because I think it works in a little bit better. Makes it a little bit easier to stir in as opposed to just dumping it all in at once, which then can be kind of hard to stir in. So I like to do it just a little bit slowly. And you can see already, slowly we are making a creamy texture. We're making a sauce pretty much the delicious kind of base to the pot pie. It really is simple. And I think that's what always needs to be seen with all these things is, you know, on a weeknight it may seem like this is a lot, but it's pretty easy. So I'm gonna slowly sit, stir it in, then add more, and then we'll have our sauce. So I have all the flour added in, and it's gonna continue to thicken as it slowly is cooking. So to finish it up, I'm gonna add in some pearl onions. I just, I like pearl onions. We have the onion in there as a base flavor, but these kind of just add a nice sweet onion flavor. Of course, some peas. 
for me it's not chicken pot pie if you don't have peas. I'm gonna stir those in. And then while that slowly is just kind of simmering and continuing to thicken with all the stock that's added in, we have our chicken. So it's been sitting here. It's now manageable, I can touch it. And this is what's super simple. I love how simple all this is. I'm gonna just dice it up, cut it however you want. And that's what's great. Chicken breast is one of those things that usually you're gonna have it in your freezer. You could pull it apart too. You could do it just with, you know, a couple forks, whatever texture kind of you want. And then we're just gonna chop it up into nice smaller pieces, put the vegetables and everything back into that pot, and we're ready to make chicken pot pie. Here's our mixture. And now we can just add all the good stuff. So this is the thickened, I mean, it smells so good with the thyme. Ugh. So we have our chicken, I have it cubed up. And this is, this is chicken heavy in the sense that it's a really hearty, but that's to me what you want in a pot pie. You want that hardiness. You want that kind of delicious, just like beautiful, wonderful, like wholesome food. So we're adding in the carrots and the sweet potato that we roasted. So to me, what I love about that is they maintain a great texture. They have all their flavor and they kind of get that wonderful like oven roasted quality to them that you just don't get if you just cook them all the time in the liquid. So look at that. You get the beautiful color. I wish you could smell this. I know I always say that and it's really just mean, but guys, I do. <laughs> so we're going to add it in here to our dish. And this is what's great. We're going to add it all in, smooth it out. Oh yeah. Oh, so good. Now, when you put this together now, we're gonna put, instead of it being a double crust, instead of it having all that extra stuff to it, I wanna make sure that we just have a biscuit on top because now you don't have to worry about that crust or cool it off before you cook it or anything. So I'm gonna smooth that out just slightly. Perfect. And we're just gonna make, we're gonna make biscuits. See, this is why I love to do this. Super simple. I'm gonna put these biscuits over the top. Look at that. It's exactly what you want. Ah, oh, it already just smells good. So I'm gonna finish putting the biscuits on, then we'll pop it in the oven. Look at that, ready to go. You get the deliciousness. I'm gonna put just a little bit of salt on top of those biscuits. You know, you don't need to, but I just like that little bit of salt hit as I'm gonna eat them is what I like. And now I'm gonna throw it right into the oven. I say throw, we really should say I'm gonna place it in the oven. I'm gonna place it in the oven, let it cook. You know, really that filling's all cooked, so we're really just letting those biscuits cook. So, let it cook, then we're gonna have some pot pie. Here it is. This is, so obviously I had to let it cool down quite a bit because it is bubbling throughout. If you're worried when yours is that it's gonna to get too full, put it on a parchment lined baking sheet so it doesn't bubble over in your oven. We know how annoying that is to clean up. So I wanted to let them get round and beautifully crispy on top, those biscuits. And then I'm gonna let it now, like I said, I let it fully cool because if you would've just got into it, it would've been way too soupy and gone everywhere. So now it's you know, kind of set up a little bit. And so you can see our portions are just ready to go. Look, oh, this, look at that. Look at how that just has that beautiful quality of like that thickness and it just holds together and yet has delicious big pieces of chicken and the carrot. Can I make the sound any more delicious? No, you need to make it so you know for yourself. So there it is. I mean, it looks like it's plated and I didn't even have to do anything. You get the biscuit falling to the side, you get, uh, and those pearl onions, they just make you feel like a rock star in the kitchen because they do all the work for you. It's just perfect. So. Gotta have some of that biscuit. Gotta take some of that chicken. Oh, guys, I'm just, mm, 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 mm-hmm, mm. -hmm. mm. Can we just like cut so I can just like eat all this? No, what I love about it is, it's really well balanced. So you get a little bit of that thyme under there, but you don't just get heavy herb. You get the wonderful vegetables, the delicious, you know, that mustard and the wine in there, it does not make it acidic. It does not make it mustardy, but it really balances out all those flavors. And that's what I love. The biscuit is just so well cooked. This to me, 
This is it. This is what you want. This is what you sometimes just need. And you know what? After a long winter, being inside, this is what you crave. It's delicious. It's wholesome. It's filling. It's comforting. That's what we all need in the kitchen, a big hug. So what do I hope? I hope you guys make this and I hope you share it around because when you share these videos, tag friends, put them in your stories, put them on your walls. That's what helps me the most, but it helps so many people see how easy this stuff is to do, to make, to have fun in the kitchen. We need to get back in the kitchen. We need to have fun. We need to make it worthwhile. We need to make good food. So share it around. Check my website, wiseguide.com for this recipe, so many other recipes and enjoy because that's what it's all about. So I'm going to keep eating and I hope you do too.